working hard every day. Not just special for my next opponent, more for future, for the second step. Ten times. No, I want a hundred times. Maybe the thousand. I've tried a thousand times. I said, you really want the big drama show? Let's give him the big drama show. He demoralizes you. He beats you down until you give up. He got that big uh, drama show back, and it got people excited again. This will be a world record 21st title defense for Triple G. Undefeated Camille Shinomi! Look at the beautiful Hollywood, Florida. Kind of jealous of the weather over there, Sergio? Well, I'm kind of jealous, but I'm kind of uh, excited that I'm not away from uh, Todd Grisham. The quarantine's doing well for me here. I'm fine. <laughs> well, we do have Todd Grisham um, st on standby. We do have Todd Grisham on standby in Hollywood, Florida, so we'll go ahead and um, pass it on over. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Todd Grisham, and we are in the midst of the biggest seven-day stretch in DAZN history, no doubt. Last Saturday, it was Anthony Joshua versus Kubrat Pulev. This Saturday, Canelo Alvarez and Callum Smith, and squished right in the middle, a big drama show. That happens Friday night live from right here at the Hard Rock Resort and Casino in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Triple G taking on Camille Sherameta for Triple G's unified middleweight titles. It's time to weigh everybody in. And for that, we send it over to our master of ceremonies. There he is, ladies and gentlemen, Ray Flores. Thank you very much, Todd. We greatly appreciate it. We are getting set for a big night of boxing tomorrow night. Live on DAZN at 5 Eastern, 2 Pacific time. All brought to you by Eddie Hearn for Metro Boxing and Triple G Promotions. Sponsored by Bet Online, Air Force Reserve, and JD Sports. We'll begin the action tomorrow at 5 o'clock Eastern, 2 Pacific time, as we welcome up the featherweights, six rounds or less scheduled. First of all, please welcome from Guadalajara, Jalisco, Mexico. His record, 14 wins, 15 losses, four draws, nine wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, damas y caballeros, presentando the Hul Elegante Olguin. And his opponent fighting out of Los Angeles, California. He brings in an undefeated record consisting of six wins. All of those coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Jalen Skywalker. This is six rounds or less in the featherweight division. First onto the scale, Dihula Olguin. Olguin, 125.4, 125.4 for Dihul Olguin. And his opponent with an unblemished record, the rising young featherweight, Jalen Skywalker. Official weight for Walker, 125.2. 125.2 for Jalen Skywalker. This will begin the action tomorrow here at the Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino here in Hollywood, Florida. Five o'clock Eastern time, live on DAZN.
I also want to wish all of you a happy holiday season as we have this tremendous stretch here on DAZN. Jalen Walker and Dihul Olguin to start off the action tomorrow at 5 Eastern, 2 Pacific time, right here on DAZN. And now both men will make their way over to the interview position to talk with my colleague Todd Grisham. As you will hear from both fighters, Walker looking to remain undefeated, but he has a stern test in Dihul Olguin tomorrow afternoon, live on DAZN. Once again, we send it to Todd Grisham. Todd. Thank you, Ray. We'll wait for Jalen to make his way over. It's much easier to take pants off than to put them back on. We can tell you that. <laughs> but here he comes, the Skywalker himself. Jalen, six wins, six knockouts. Your first time ever fighting in the United States. You look like you're in great shape. How do you feel right now? Ready to go, excited, ready to put on a show. Now tell everyone why you had to have your first six fights in Mexico. I had to have my first six fights in Mexico because I was 17 and I was too young to fight out here. So now, it's about time to show how my U.S. debut. Yeah, in the United States, you have to be 18 to be a professional fighter. In Mexico, you can go younger. So that's what he did. Crossed the border, six fights, six knockouts. To someone who's never seen you before, how would you describe your style? A power boxer, aggressive, exciting, smart, but still exciting. So if you want to see me, you want to watch it. You predicting a knockout in your first fight here on the zone? Yep, stoppage, TKO, or knockout. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Good luck to you, Jalen. Back over now to sweet baby Ray Flores. Thank you very much, Todd. Walker seems very confident. And now we will bring up two confident welterweights tomorrow night. Six rounds or less scheduled. First of all, please welcome from Siaya, Kenya. His record, four wins, four losses, one draw. Two wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dennis O'Koth. And his opponent from Staten Island, New York. He brings in an undefeated professional record that stands at eight wins, half a dozen victories coming by way of knockout, known as the Albanian Bear. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing Raisha Tamati. It's all being brought to you by Eddie Hearn for Matchroom Boxing and Triple G on Promotions. And also sponsored by Bet Online, Air Force Reserve, and JD Sports. As we have Dennis O'Koth on the scale. One forty seven for Dennis O'Koth. One forty seven for O'Koth. And his opponent, the undefeated, the Albanian bear, Raisha Tamati. 146.6 for Raisha Tamati. 146.6 for Raisha Tamati. We have Mati and Okoth, a part of our sensational night of boxing as we go live at 5 Eastern, 2 Pacific time, live on the zone from the Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino here in Hollywood, Florida. Mati and Okoth, six rounds or less in the welterweight division. Rayshot Mati will make his way to the interview position as he will have a conversation with my dear friend, Todd Grisham. Rashad, back in action. That was a quick turnaround for you. How are you feeling? I'm good. I'm ready to go. You know, um, last fight was a little short, so now I'm looking to make it a more interesting fight this fight, and we'll see what happens. Everyone knows you as the Albanian bear, but if you could share the story about what your first nickname was and how it came about. You were the punching baby. 
Yeah, oh my god. Uh, ever since I was little, I was always punching and stuff like that. So it kind of what motivated me to start training and competing and all that stuff. So then it transitioned to Mad Dog, and then finally Albanian Bear. But, but your mom called you the punching baby, didn't she? Oh yeah, she still does. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, what are we gonna see from the punching baby on Friday night? Uh, just an interesting fight. You know, I want to, I want to be able to steal the show, and that's the main goal for every fight. Um, so welcome to the Mighty Show, everybody. All right, there he is. And I know you want to speak a little Albanian to your friends and family overseas. What's your message? Uh, my Albanian's not too good, but... Uh, i put you on the spot. <laughs> you, you better come up with something. Um, yom Krenasi, Yom Triptad. Boom goes the dynamite. Ray, back to you. Thank you very much, Todd. Hey, that was pretty good. I got to say, from Ray Shot Mati. Now we get ready for our next matchup. This one, 10 rounds in the super middleweight division, all brought to you by Eddie Hearn for Matchroom Boxing and Triple G Promotions. As we bring up his record, 12 wins, five losses, one draw, five wins coming by way of knockout. Joining us from Sacramento, California, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Michael Guy and his opponent, from London, England, 28 wins, including 16 of those coming by way of knockout against five losses. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing John the Gorilla Ryder. This is 10 rounds in the super middleweight division. Michael Guy can make his way onto the scale once he is done taking off his Sweats. The official weight for Michael Guy, 168.2 for Michael Guy. 168.2 for Michael Guy. And his opponent, John the Gorilla Rider. The official weight for Ryder, 170.2. 170.2 for the London product in John Ryder. John Ryder and Michael Guy matching up tomorrow night live on DAZN. We get the action going at 5 Eastern, 2 Pacific time right here from Hollywood, Florida. And don't forget, we want to thank our outstanding sponsors, Bet Online, Air Force Reserve, and a JD Sports, a big night of boxing tomorrow night from right here in Hollywood, Florida, as John Ryder is now making his way to speak with Todd Grisham. Good to see you, John. Last time we saw you, you put on an outstanding performance against Callum Smith. A lot of people thought you won that fight. What did you take from that performance? That I should be world champion currently, but um, politics is what politics is in boxing, and um, I'm here Friday night to, to make a statement and, and move on my career. And what do you think is next for you if you can get a win on Friday? Well, not not looking past Mike Guy at all. He's a tough, credible opponent. Um, but 2021, I want to be building towards world titles again. Have you ever fought a guy that wore nipple rings to a weigh-in? Uh, not that I know of, not that I can remember, but there's a first for everything. <laughs> Maybe they're intimidating. I don't know how you feel about that. What's the strategy to beat Mike Guy on Friday? What do you have to do to win? Well, if he's still got a nipple ring, punch him in that. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a bad strategy. Are you gonna Are you gonna go for the knockout, or do you just want to box your way to a victory? No, I'm I'm happy for either. I mean, it's been a year at the ring, a little over a year, so um, getting some rounds in is is, is important. Um, just to come away victorious. You know, a couple of weeks ago there were rumors that it might be you actually fighting Canelo Alvarez. Is that still the fight that you would like to have? I think he bottled it, but um, yeah, we've we got Mike Guy. He's he's a, a tough a tough man. He, he accepted the challenge. Obviously, Canelo didn't bottle it, but he. he he saw a greater opportunity in fighting Canelo Smith for the titles. But listen, I'm fully focused on Mike Guy, but next year I'll, I'll take on any comers. What's it going to be like for you to fight in an environment with no fans since you have such a passionate fan base over in England? 
Uh, listen, I've got everyone I need with me. Tony Sims, Dan Lawrence, Charlie Sims. I'll go to war with them anywhere in the world. So it doesn't matter who, who's by my side. It's nice to have fans, but I've got the three guys by my side I need. You certainly have a unique perspective. I'd love to get your prediction on what happens the following night after you fight between Canelo and Callum. Uh, I can only see a Canelo win. I just think uh, I think Callum's done at 168. I think his days are numbered and have been for a while. And Canelo's gonna gonna rain. All right. Well, you're gonna rain too. Hopefully on Friday night. We're gonna make it rain. All right, make it rain. All right. Good luck to you, John. All right. Back over to you, Ray. Thank you very much, Todd. Now we get ready for the first hour of our three straight world title bouts tomorrow night live on the zone as we get going at five Eastern, two Pacific time. This one is 10 rounds for the Women's WBA Super Featherweight Championship of the World. And it's brought to you by Eddie Hearn for Matchroom Boxing and Triple G Promotions in association with Don Chargan Productions and Paco Presents. First of all, we want to welcome from Tolu, Colombia, her record 19 wins, 14 of those coming by way of knockout against 11 losses and three draws. Ladies and gentlemen, damas y caballeros presentando, presenting Calista Silgado. And her opponent from Seoul, South Korea, she's undefeated, 17 wins, no losses, one draw. Four wins coming by way of a knockout. She is the champion. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Yoon Mia Choi. First on to the scale, Kalista Silgado. Calista Silgado on to the scale. Her official weight, 131.4 for Silgado. 131.4 for Silgado. She is over. And her opponent, the undefeated champion from Seoul, South Korea, Yuna Mi Choi. The official weight for Choi, 130 even for Choi, 130 even for the champion. You and me, Choi and Kalista Silgado going head to head. Choi will be defending her WBA Super Featherweight Championship of the World tomorrow night live on DAZN. And don't forget, we want to thank our sponsors, Bet Online, Air Force Reserve, and also JD Sports. So you and me, Choi, looking to retain her title and remain undefeated as she will have a quick conversation with Todd Grisham. Thank you, Ray. Uh Hin Myu Choi is originally from North Korea. If you don't uh, know too much about her story, her family defected to South Korea. Her father had a great job uh, at a government company in North Korea. Come on in. And when he got to South Korea, instead of everything being better, in some ways it was worse because in that country, apparently, according to Hin, uh, North Koreans are kind of looked down on and it's hard for them to get work. So they relied on you to provide money from your boxing talent for the family. That's a lot of pressure for you. Does your family still need your help in order to pay bills by your success in the boxing ring? Oh. Um, they do not need my support from boxing. Um, they don't, I mean, although they are very proud of me for what I have accomplished, um, 
they don't actually want me to, uh, they're not, they don't, they don't need my support. Okay, well, I guess I botched that story, didn't I? <laughs> I know as when you were younger, you certainly did at the beginning of your career. That's why you said uh, in a recent article, that's why you became a boxer was to help provide for your family. So it's good to see that they're back on their feet and doing well. This is your first time fighting outside of your home country in the United States. What's that like for you? 미국에 대해서 첫 시합 어떤 느낌이에요? 어 일단 미국에서 시합할 수 있게 돼서 너무 네, 행복하고요. 앞으로 이제 미국에서 훨씬 더 앞으로 나아가서 더 멋진 게임들을 하는 챔피언이 보여드리겠습니다. It's it's a great opportunity to fight in the U.S. It's always been a dream of mine, and um, moving forward, I wish to continue to be able to fight in the U.S. and show everyone. A great boxing match. So, what will we will we see from you on Friday night? What is your prediction? Um, I'm KO win. There's some English for you. A KO win. Good luck to you. Thank you. All right, back over to you, Ray. Thank you very much, Todd. No need to translate that. She's predicting a knockout victory tomorrow night. Well, now we get ready for our co-main event of the evening. This one, 12 rounds for the IBO Super Middleweight Championship of the World. First of all, we want to welcome to the scale. His record, 18 wins, 13 of those coming by way of knockout against no losses. Hailing from Esmeraldas, Ecuador. Ladies and gentlemen, Davansi Caballero Saki Here is Carlos Gongora. And his opponent, he also holds an undefeated record, 16 wins, a dozen of those coming by way of knockout from almighty Kazakhstan. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing Ali Akhmedov. It's all being brought to you by Eddie Hearn for Matchroom Boxing and Triple G Promotions. First on the scale, the hard-hitting Carlos Gongora. One sixty-seven point two for Gongora. One sixty-seven point two for Gongora, and his opponent also a heavy hitter. He's undefeated, 16 wins, 12 of those by way of knockout, Ali Akhmedov. The official weight for Akhmedov, 167.4 for Akhmedov, 167.4 for Ali Akhmedov. Ali Akhmedov and Carlos Gongoram. They will be colliding for the IBO Super Middleweight Championship of the World. That is our co-main event tomorrow night, live on DAZN. Akhmedov and Gorgonov fighting for the IBO Super Middleweight Championship. And don't forget, we want to thank Bet Online, Air Force Reserve, and JD Sports. Well, these two, this one has me excited, Todd, because they are two knockout punchers. I would bet that this one likely won't go the distance as Todd Grisham is going to have a quick talk with Ali Akhmedov as he gets set to collide against Carlos Gongora. Ray, you got to give me one of those. Someone's O has got to go. Let's oh, hear. Oh, you know that someone's O's got to go tomorrow night for the IBO Super Middleweight Championship of the World. Todd, Ali, thank you for joining me. The last time we saw you, you got a knockout in 44 seconds. What can we expect from you tomorrow night? What can we expect from you tomorrow night? You know, it's boxing, and we don't know what to expect. 
от каждого боя. В прошлый раз получилось так. Будем надеяться, что и в этом году, и в этом бою пройдет все хорошо. Это бокс, я не могу загадывать наперед. You know, this is boxing. You cannot predict what will happen. But uh, last fight uh, was uh, a fortunate fight for me. I hope that this year, that during this fight, I will uh, be successful as well. You're one of Triple G's closest training partners. What's it like to be able to train with the middleweight champion of the world every day? Вы спаринг партнер Геннадия Головкина. Что значит тренироваться вместе с прославленным чемпионом? Ну, знаете, это, во-первых, большой опыт. Это первое такое, получать большой опыт от Геннадия. Это многого стоит для меня. Triple G is a source of a lot of experience for me. I'm gaining a lot from him. This fighter has a good amateur background like you do. He's undefeated like you do. Give me some of the similarities and dis discrepancies between your styles. У вашего соперника была хорошая карьера в любительском боксе. У вас, в принципе, есть много всего общего. В чем различие? Что вы видите у вас отличие между вам и вашим противником? Он очень хороший боец, и я отношусь к нему с уважением. Но это не любительский бокс, это профессиональный бокс. И здесь совсем другая игра. И в пятницу вечером мы будем показывать лучшую версию себя. Uh, my opponent is a solid fighter, and I have a lot of respect for him. And, uh, but this is not an amateur uh, fight. This is the professional fight. And on Friday, I, Friday night, we will demonstrate what we are capable of. All right. Akhmedov versus Gongora. Good luck to you. Back over to Ray Flores. Thank you very much, Todd. Now we get ready for our main event of the evening. 12 rounds or less for the IBF and IBO middleweight championship of the world. Brought to you by Triple G Promotions. Eddie Hearn for Matchroom Boxing in association with Warriors Boxing. As we bring up to the stage, he is the challenger. Undefeated, 21 wins. Five of those coming by way of knockout. Hailing from Biliostok, Poland. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the undefeated challenger, Camille Sheremeta. Camille Sheremeta representing Poland. And his opponent, truly needing no introduction, with an outstanding professional record, 40 wins, 35 of those coming by way of knockout against one loss and one bout even. From Karaganda, Kazakhstan. Tomorrow night, he will be making his record breaking 21st defense of his middleweight championship of the world. The big drama show, Gennady Gennadyovich Golovkin, known to the world as Triple G. First on to the scale, the challenger, Camille Sheremeta. One fifty nine for Sheremeta. One fifty nine for Camille Sheremeta, the challenger. And now the champion, the big drama show, Gennady Gennadyovich Golovkin, Triple G. The official weight, 159.2 for Triple G. 159.2 for the champion. The big drama show has made its way to Hollywood, Florida, live on the zone. Five Eastern, two Pacific time. Golovkin and Sheremeta, our main event tomorrow night, live on DAZN. This is for the IBF and IBO middleweight championships of the world. Nice sign of respect between these two combatants. 
And Todd, anytime Gennady Golovkin is inside the ring, it is must-see television. And lo and behold, we get that opportunity tomorrow night live on DAZN, the big drama show here in South Florida. That's right, Ray. And of course, Camille Sherameta has never lost, and this is by far the biggest fight of his life, but he came in supremely confident all week long, feels that he has the game plan, he's got the blueprint to beat one of the best to ever do it. He'll be making his way over here momentarily to speak his mind. He also said this fight is massive in Poland. It's the biggest thing going. He says this will be the fight of the year in Poland for a Polish boxer, and he takes that responsibility very seriously. Come on in. I guess it's gonna be the champ first. Here he is, Triple G. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you so much. Finally, you're back. 14 months, it's been forever. How do you feel? I feel great. Thank you so much for everybody. You know, thank you very much, my team. Thank you very much, my family. Thank you, my, thank you very much, like, you know, like people who support boxing, fans, everybody, because right now, time, boxing come back. I'm so excited. <laughs> I, I can tell. And I know you're very excited about the 21st title defense. That's a record that you take very seriously. Yeah, this is very important for me. And absolutely, probably this is important for boxing. Maybe I'm not understand 100% right now. You know, thank you, Shuri Meta teams, because, you know, like these guys is ready for good fight, good event. You know, like, why not? Probably we have, I know we had good time for, for good prepare. You know, like, probably we show like maybe the best show for this year. Oh, well, I, that's, that sounds great. I know last time you got sick before you fought Darianchenko, but you look very healthy right now. Every fight is different. Yeah, last fight is last fight. You know, I respect, you know, Darianchenko. You know, right now it's a different story. Probably, you know, this story is more fashion. And what kind of fighter is he and how do you beat someone like Sharameta? You know, Camille, he has, you know, had, he had good amateur career. I know he beat this guy who have Willa, like cup, like Willa Barker cup, you know, like a, it's amazing time, you know, like right now he's undisputed, you know, no losses. Come on guys, he's number one. He's my official challenger. You know, right now he has best record, you know. I know this boxing, you know, this professional fight, this professional style boxing, you know, is everybody has chance, come on. Everyone wants to know, are you going to be the seek and destroy Triple G, or are you going to be the more measured, patient Triple G? I had experience, you know, just right now I'm more smart. Yeah. If you give me a chance, of course, like, you know, maybe a fight is short. If you stay focused, stay serious, oh, I have, we have both, like, a lot of problems. <laughs> all right, and what's your message to all your fans watching right now as you get set to defend your titles? Hey, come on, guys, just boxing, go back. Don't miss this fight. We promise bring beautiful show. Okay, see you Friday night. So not the big drama show, the beautiful show. It'll be on display right here on DAZN. Thank you, Gennady. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, guys. And now we'll bring in the challenger, Camille Sherabetta. Hello. So tell me what it was like for you to be staring down the face of an absolute legend that you're going to be fighting the next night. A lot of people would almost find that surreal. Jak to było dla ciebie, jak stałeś naprzeciwko takiej legendy? Jak się czułeś? Coś, coś niesamowitego, że to w końcu już się dzieje i naprawdę bardzo się cieszę, że to już jest ten czas. To jest najlepszy czas na tą walkę. It was incredible. Uh, I uh, feel great and. Uh, Mm, I just feel that it's, it's going to happen right now, and uh, I just can't wait. So what is the strategy? How do you beat Triple G? Jaka jest strategia, jak go pokonasz, jak pokonasz Triple G? Nie chcę teraz za dużo mówić, bo i tak wszystko, jutro wszystko ring zweryfikuje. Mamy z trenerem ustaloną taktykę, której będziemy się trzymać, żeby wygrać ten pojedynek. I don't want to talk about it. We, uh, we've got a plan with our trainer, and we will stick to it. I know you said uh, that uh, this is a huge fight over in Poland. How much pressure do you feel, not just to represent yourself well, but to represent your country? To jest wielka walka w Polsce. Jak czy czujesz na sobie jakąś presję? Ja nie mam nic do stracenia. Jutro chcę pokazać najlepszą wersję Kamila Szeremety i zdobyć tytuł, zapisać się w historii polskiego boksu. I've got nothing to lose. I need to show the best version of Kamil Szeremeta 
and uh, I want to be in a history of Polish boxing. So what will the headline read in the Warsaw newspaper on Saturday about your fight? Jakie będą nagłówki w gazetach w sobotę po twojej walce? Nie myślę o tym tak naprawdę, to nie czas. Trzeba jutro wejść do ringu w 100% wykonać plan i przede wszystkim wygrać tą walkę. Honestly, actually I don't think about it. I just need to uh, stick to my plan and do everything in the ring. Okay, good luck to you. Thanks. All right, let's send it back over to Ray Flores one final time. Thank you very much, Todd. Greatly appreciate it. As yes, the fighters have weighed in. They've made their way onto the scale and the talk. It is now done. We are getting ready for a big night of boxing tomorrow night at 5 o'clock Eastern, 2 Pacific time, live on DAZN. It is the big drama show front and center. Gennady Golovkin looking to make a record-breaking 21st defense of his middleweight championship of the world. But standing in his way is Kamil Sheremeta, the undefeated contender from Poland. Join us tomorrow night live on DAZN at 5 Eastern, 2 Pacific time. All brought to you by Triple G Promotions and Eddie Hearn from Matchroom Boxing. Happy holidays, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow live from Hollywood, Florida, live and only on DAZN. Welcome back to San Antonio. We're joined now with the jet setter himself, Eddie Hearn. Eddie, it's nice to have you here. How are you doing? Great to be here. Obviously, London last week. Uh, we actually have a show in Italy tonight in Milan on DAZN, and then tomorrow in Miami, and then back here on San Anto in San Antonio. I'm not going to Italy tonight, <laughs> but I am going backwards and forwards. Are you not jet two. lag? Oh, no, I'm just buzzing. How can you not be excited? <laughs> I mean, to end a year like this with a schedule like this, amazing job from from Matrim and DAZN, and, and thank you to the fighters because they're the ones that have stayed ready and they're the ones that are willing to, ready to go. We just watched the, uh, the way in there. Gennady Golovkin scares me, even being on the <laughs> other side of America, to be yeah, honest with you. He looks absolutely ready to go. He looks shredded. He does. I mean, we were saying, you know, as he gets it to the, the latter stages of his career, 160, you know, I always felt that we're going to see him up at 168 pounds. Came in there at 159.2. You know, looked a little bit tight in the face, but as you'd expect. But wow, I mean, no, probably I, the strongest I've seen him look for for many years. He looks shredded. He looks like a like a sculpture. But the the, the thing about the face, he just you know, anytime you dehydrate or whether you made the weight correctly or not, it always draws your face. I don't worry about Golovkin looking a little bit drawn. It's how muscular he looks, how big he looks. He looks shredded. He looks ready. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it was. Uh, I was just going to say because he's been doing a lot of strength work I, at the press conference yesterday. He was saying about. He's been on the beach a lot. I mean, he looks looks in yeah, great. Yeah, he looks like yeah, you. Yeah, exactly. Well, I don't know. <laughs> Wait, underneath this, he definitely don't look like me. I wish I looked like Gennady Golovkin. <laughs> but you could see the, the the strength work that's gone into camp. Obviously, working with Jonathan Banks as well. That'll be interesting because are we seeing you know a slight demise in Triple right. G as his career goes on, or are we seeing him starting to adapt to Jonathan Banks? You know, he has had two fights with him now since the Canelo Alvarez fight. The questions are going to be asked by Zerometa, who also looks great, by the way. Looks confident, looks steely, but hasn't yet boxed at that level. And we were just saying off camera, you know, ignorance is bliss, you said, for, well, for I said him. That. In, in, in the respect of maybe he doesn't fear Gennady Golovkin in the way that other fighters that have mixed at that level normally would. And that's exactly what a fighter in his position needs to do because he's unbeaten. He's undefeated. He doesn't know what it's like to lose. He hasn't tasted that yet. So I like the look on his face. I like the body language. And if you're going to beat a monster, that's the mentality you have to have. Let's talk a bit about his last performance against Derevchenko. I mean, they often say a fighter is only as good as their last fight. We know that a lot of people had Triple G losing. Um, just, do you feel like he has so much more to prove this time around? I think he's proved so much, hasn't he? I mean, I, I think firstly we have to look at that was at a stage where.
Derevchenko was highly underrated. Yeah. You know, we saw him perform well against Charlo recently. We saw him lose a close fight with Daniel Jacobs for the world title. This is a, a world-class fighter with a very strong amateur pedigree as well. So I think that sometimes everyone just expects Triple G to go in there and bulldoze someone. I don't think it was his greatest performance, you know. He is getting old. I mean, let's not, you know, he can't fight the way he boxed forever. So, you know, this fight's going to tell us a lot, I think, because if he goes in there like a wrecking ball and demolishes Zerometa, I think we can say, OK, we give him the benefit of the doubt. Jonathan Banks' relationship's working. You look stronger than ever. You, you're still one of the main guys, the main guy at 160 pounds. If he struggles against Zerometa, I think those right. questions will start to re-emerge. But for me, I don't, I don't believe that Gennady Golovkin is on the slide. Mm -hmm. I just believe he's coming to the back end of his career and, and he's always going to be extremely dangerous. But I think this is more the pressure to put on a great performance and to make a statement. But I also think that people are curious as to how he's going to perform after being out of the ring for 14 months. I mean, Well, I think that's something that's very interesting in all fights at the moment. I mean, I felt that AJ didn't get the credit he deserved last week. One, because I thought it was a great performance. But two, he hasn't boxed for over 12 months. Any fighter, you know, that they all say the same thing. Inactivity is a killer for their career. Mm -hmm. And these high-level guys, I mean, look at, look at Canelo and Callum Smith. Same thing. Both guys been out of the ring for over 12 months. It's very unusual to see a fighter at the moment going into a big fight that hasn't been out of the ring for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Sergio will know better than me, but... Is that, that, that lack of consistency in the ring due to the pandemic mm -hmm. of Gennady Golovkin being out of the ring for 12 months, mm -hmm. will that hurt him more than it will hurt Zerometa? Because he has got a year older no, in that time. We were talking about this off camera as well, and it doesn't affect puncher styles like Gennady Golovkin, who's seek and destroy, who doesn't rely on, on rhythm and foot movement and using the ring and moving laterally. It won't affect that rhythm. We know what, what he's going to do is that's going to be seek and destroy. So uh, when it comes to a puncher like that, I don't think it's going to, be a big issue. What do you do? I've got a question for you because I always find oh, yeah, this please, Daddy. <laughs> We've got some time to fill. Don't worry about it. But you know, with Gennady Golovkin, I mean, you see early on in the fights, he does get outboxed in the opening cut rounds. I mean, we saw it with Derevchenko. We even saw it, you know, with Steve Rose. Steve where Rose the first couple of rounds, him a couple you know, times. And I remember when Kell Brook boxed him as well. You know, two or three rounds, you're thinking, whoa, whoa. But as those feet start to slow, you're going to see fighters extend that period maybe to the mid rounds of the fight. I mean, what do you do if you're Zerometa? You're not a concussive puncher, right? You can't just move all night and let him continuously try and cut you off. What do you do? I see why you're asking me this question, Eddie. That's very sly of you because I wasn't much of a puncher either. So how would I fend off against a that, puncher so like Golovkin? <laughs> you got to go to Golovkin's body. We've seen that Derevchenko actually hurt Golovkin, the monster to the body. We've never seen Golovkin hurt before. So whether you're a puncher or not, a well-placed body shot in the liver and the solar plexus is going to do the job. So that's one. And two, you know that he's getting older. So make him, make Golovkin use his legs and make him come after you. And you got to fight, you got to fight him off too. You can't just move and stick and box and aim for the body. You got to get respect if you're Zerometa. And Zerometa's showing that 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 he's confident, he's willing. He says, oh, Poland is watching. When you have that much you know, uh, pressure on your shoulders, that, that much uh, uh, people supporting you, I mean, sky's the limit. You can do great things. I think that Derevchenko fight was great, wasn't it? it was one yeah, of the best yeah. fights I've seen because what Derevchenko did was box him. And then I was thinking, you know, sooner or later, Gennady's going to cut him off. And then he would choose to stand in the pocket right. and trade with him, particularly to the body. You know, so he, he would be winning, winning off the back foot. Then he'd stay in, in, on the inside with faster hands and let four or five shots go and then start to move again. And he, he was breaking him down. I thought, I think actually that fight's heavily underrated. I mean, I, well, I know at the time we were all yeah. saying that was one of the fight of the year contenders, but I remember being in the corral there for that fight and it was mm. absolutely brutal. Well, I thought it was a fight of the year and I, I don't think it was a robbery either. I think it was a right decision, but it, it could have gone either way. They don't call that man the technician uh, for a reason, but I think that's exactly how you beat a fighter like Golovkin. Zero Meta, I've seen a couple of videos of him. He, he's not much, he's not great at anything, but he does everything pretty good and that unblemished, undefeated record, you always want to save that that zero so um, we're gonna see what happens I actually have a question for the both of you on this uh, uh, they mentioned Oscar De La Hoya's name Oof. alongside mm. Triple G he said in, a, in an interview a few weeks back that he was willing to fight Triple G what are your thoughts on that well, did, you, did you see Triple G's comments yeah but you know what I was hearing that there might have been a translation I like well, issue. I, but I'm I not wouldn't be sure. surprised because it was very unusual to hear <laughs> Triple yeah. G say something like that but you know we know there's no love loss between those two. I mean, when you, when you look at the world of boxing at the moment and you look at some of the things that's going on, 
i.e. Mike Tyson against Roy Jones right. and Jake Paul against whoever. <laughs> you know, I have to say, like, commercially, Triple G against Oscar de la Hoya is definitely a fight that I would tune in and watch. <laughs> I don't think it's a good idea for Oscar de la Hoya. No. I mean, this guy is an absolute legend of the sport of boxing, mm -hmm. right? And a, a legend. But he has spent the last, I don't know, 10 years plus mm -hmm. Enjoying himself, <laughs> I think that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a good way to say. And you can't, you, you can't hold up to the hammer that could be unleashed. And let me tell you, if Gennady Golovkin got him in the ring, I mean, the smiles are great, aren't they, Gennady? I mean, yeah. one of the greatest They're smiles in boxing, <laughs> but also one of the scariest men Absolutely. in boxing. I mean, he wouldn't just want to do damage to Oscar de la Hoya. He would like to prolong that damage. The promoter in you wants to promote that. And I got I the great lie. name like, for you, you the know, golden boy versus I, I, the good boy. Yeah, yeah, I, start, oh, yeah, yeah. I like that. I started to think last night, I wonder how much Oscar wants for that fight, <laughs> you know, but, but I just think, you know, I don't like seeing these legends go back to work mm. because what it means is you need the money, right? Right. And how can you leave the sport with all the massive fights you've had? I mean, Mike Tyson's the same. Let's not kid ourselves. He's doing it for the money, right? Right. That's all the money that he's earned or he should have earned in his career, it just shows you that people haven't been looked after properly and, and people, someone's, someone has let them down. So Oscar De La Hoya, same thing. Like this guy's returning, he don't want to fight. He really, yeah. he really wants to go through training camp and put himself mm. in. He wants the money, mm -mm. right? Right, it has to be. I mean, we're prize fighters, but you know, that prize yeah, always but, chases but, us. At what but point is it worth your health though? No, it, well, it's never worth health. But also health, but also legacy. Right. You know, he will forever be a pound for pound great. Mm. If he goes in there and gets, you know, just decimated by Triple G. One, it's extremely dangerous, and two, uh, you know, it tarnish, it does tarnish yeah, his legacy. That's, that's what you'll be. I mean, Roy Jones. I feel like Roy Jones, for all the you know the legacy that he created in his career, people will look. I mean, he's been boxing nonstop for ten or fifteen years. He's been boxing out in Russia. He got knocked out like a year ago, really badly. Uh, you know, I just I don't know. Boxers aren't happy until they 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 know they don't have no fight left. They're gonna keep fighting until the end. Legends die hard, mm. Eddie. Whether you look at Muhammad Ali or Sugar Ray Leonard or an Oscar De La Hoya, they always gotta end it badly because that's just the way but, they but are. They, they think they always I, think I, they have I, that one last one. I know that, but that's one. when someone's gotta look after you. Oh yeah. Someone's gotta you know advise you in the in the correct manner. But someone, but if you have the money and you've created the legacy. I, I know what fighters are like because I've dealt with them for many, many years. And it's a time to say no. It's just like sitting at the poker table with all your chips, you know, and you've been playing for, for days and days. And you're right. thinking, I can't believe this. It's time to go. You know, thank you very much. I'm going. <laughs> I'm out. going. Yeah, I'm going to the beach. <laughs> Bye. Yeah. That's the same thing in a boxing career when you have to look at it. But fighters, I believe, leave the sport struggling for a couple of reasons. One, they could be struggling financially, and two, they could be struggling emotionally and mentally because they haven't achieved what they hope to achieve. Mm -hmm. So what I see is when a fighter is financially secure, but also can sit back on his couch and look at the wall and see those world championship belts up there, that's when you can walk away happy and content. I asked, I but how many fighters walk away content? None of no. them. And I asked Sugar Ray Leonard this question. I asked him, what brought you back? What made you continue wanting to fight? He says, it's the adrenaline, mm. being under them lights. There's no other rush than doing that inside the ring. And I got to tell you, if it's not the money, it's the adrenaline. Nothing, mm. nothing beats mm. uh, just your blood pumping, your blood boiling, someone coming after you. There's no replacing that. Mm. And that's why I think fighters have a hard time adjusting with that. I mean, I'm having a good time adjusting to it because I'm, I'm still calling fights. Yeah. Mm. But if I wasn't in the ring, I'll sure miss mm, it. Mm. But was there a part of you that did struggle with it initially? I'm still struggling. <laughs> 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 well, we know that the trilogy is a fight that Never we Never rule out a fight for Sergio Moro. You know, anytime <laughs> anyone mentions his name, he's going, what, what? I'm ready, yeah, what? There you he's go. already got the shorts on. Show me the money, I'm a price He's got fighter, the shorts Eddie. on underneath yeah. the trousers just in show, case he Show me the to, money. Yeah, exactly. Well, we know the trilogy is a fight that we want to see. Obviously, Canelo will have to get past uh, Callum Smith. Mm -hmm on Saturday night, and that's a big task at hand, so we can't overlook that. But um, Canelo did say in an interview this week that there were talks pre-pandemic. Uh, could you tell us a bit about what, what sort of talks were going on at that point? Because to my understanding, I didn't think that any there were any talks going with on Triple at all. G? With Triple G? With Triple G and yeah, Canelo. Yeah, I mean, that was a bit before my time, to be honest with you. I mean, we rocked up, what, two months ago, you know, a bit less than that, and got this over the line. I think what I've learned about Canelo Alvarez and, and Eddie Reynoso is, They'll fight anyone. Right. Mm -hmm. They really have no fear. I mean, they go into this fight this Saturday. So it's, it's quite scary. You know, I look at Callum Smith, our guy, six foot four, punches really hard, head to body, fantastic jab, can do, can do everything. And it's not that they don't respect him, but they just, the confidence that they have within the mm -hmm. team is like, good fighter, Callum, best right. at 168. We have no problems with this. Don't worry.
You know, right. and, and that's quite scary in, its, in itself. I think with the Triple G fight, the problem is, is that they're going to want to, if, if Canelo Alvarez wins this fight, they're going to want to move very quickly onto the next one because this is what they're like, right? They're reactive people. So it's like, you know, it's the buzz of the challenge. What's right. next? What's next? Right. And I think when you look at, if they don't fight Triple G, I think they fight Billy Joe Saunders. He will then look at the 168 pound division. He'll say, okay, I've got the WBC, I've got the WBA, I've got the ring magazine belt. I'm two belts away from being undisputed. Mm -hmm. So I've got, um, I've got uh, Billy Joe Saunders next and I've got Caleb Plant. Okay, Caleb Plant's fighting in January. You know, we know that Matram have Billy Joe Saunders. We can do this now. But I think they're going to want to, if, they, if they're successful on Saturday, I think they're going to want to move at speed. And I just, whether Golovkin can move at the same speed yeah. to get it done for May, that's what we've got to try and bring together. At the same time, I look at Callum Smith, our guy, and go, I want this guy to do the business. He can win this fight. He really can. Mm -hmm. But from a DAZN perspective, I know what you guys are thinking and the execs <laughs> are thinking is we want Triple G against, yeah. uh, against uh, Canelo Alvarez, number three. And it is one of the biggest fights in the world. Do you think that Canelo, should he be successful on Saturday night, do you think that he vacates his middleweight title, his WBA middleweight title? Yeah, I think that, you know, we keep having this conversation about belts. And, you know, I did a piece yesterday with, with on the press conference and I'm getting a little bit sick and tired of the politics and the problems in making fights because of belts, right? Mm -hmm. It's difficult because every fighter wants to win belts, right? They always dreamed of, you know, you would have grown up watching whoever it was, Oscar right. or, you know, or Duran or Leonard with a WBC and all these different, and you knew those belts. You know, when you turned pro, you knew the red one was the IBF. You knew that, you know, the green and gold was the WBC. Right. The ring magazine was in Rocky and, you know, it was like, so it's hard to convince a fighter to drop belts or to not worry about that for the bigger picture. But mm -hmm. this comes down to like Fury Joshua where, you know, you've got WBO saying, no, he's got to fight Usyk and Usyk saying, well, how much are you going to give me to allow this fight? You know, and in the end, it's like, we, kn we all know that the winner of Fury Joshua is the best heavyweight on the planet, right? right? And we really want it to be undisputed because that was always the dream. But at what point do you just go, you know, we're writing you a check, all of you guys, for millions of dollars. <laughs> and then who sits down there going, how many millions am I getting? Well, you could just go, do you know what? We'll just do it anyway, you know? So right. I think when you talk about Canelo, Canelo respects the belts. Canelo loves the belts. But at the same time, Canelo wants challenges, right? And we can't let belts get in the way and mandatories get in the way right. of making these great fights because boxing has a problem right now where the paymasters, the broadcasters, they want numbers. Right. right, And what's delivering numbers at the moment? Great fights or exhibitions or YouTubers. Mm -hmm. And if we as boxing don't start to make these big fights, that's going to become the norm. And as someone that's been around boxing since seven, I would hate that. Even though I'd done Logan Paul against KSI and it was a great <laughs> experience, <laughs> yeah. to do that every week would break. I'd walk away from the sport, honestly. Honestly, regardless mm -hmm. of the money, because I love boxing. But if we don't deliver the product for the broadcaster, they will ask for things that do deliver the numbers. So Errol Spence against Terence Crawford, get it made. AJ against Fury, get it made. You know, Devin Haney against Rich. Lopez, get it made. Triple G against Cano, whatever, get it made. This is the only way boxing is going to survive because boxing is greater than all of those exhibitions and all of those YouTube events. Mm -hmm. But we don't get the consistency of the great fights. Now we've got the excuse coming through the pandemic to say, mm -hmm. sorry, mate, you've got to fight this guy. And if right. you don't, maybe we part company. Right. But our broadcasts are saying, you, you know, Ryan Garcia against Luke Campbell. The winner has to fight Devin Haney. Right? That's it. Yeah, that's, that's the fight. That's and if you don't like it, mate, off you go. There's the door. <laughs> we do it for money. We do it for belts. But well listen, said. the money's got to be great for those kind of fights because we have to respect the fighters and make sure we get them what they deserve. But we can't let managers and advisors and trainers, their job... A manager's and advisor's job is to get their fighter the easiest fight for the most amount of money. I love saying that. Right? Yeah, absolutely. That's that's boxing. Well, you know I what? Know Thank you. Am I, talking, <laughs> am I talking too much? I've got, I've got a few more. God bless you. I've got a few more hours if you need me. No, I'll, you we'll know what? After, we know. always appreciate okay. your time. So thank you very much, Eddie Hearn. We're going to go ahead and toss it on over to Canelo. Pound for pound, the number one fighter in the world. Canelo! This is a champion in his prime. Ah! Canelo Alvarez has been a pro since 15. He can put you down with anything.
Diallo is just fundamentally too sound. He fights the very best. He's the number one guy at 160 pounds. He has a secondary title at 168. He just beat Sergey Kovalev for the title at 175. No one is going to beat Canelo. Canelo has a lot to offer still at the best he has to Lo he batallado, he sufrido eh, para todo esto y me lo creo. And welcome back. We are now joined with the WBO middleweight champion, Demetrius Boo Boo Andrade. It's great to see you. It's been a minute. Yeah, it has. It's been a while, a while yeah. since January. But yeah. It's good to be here. It's good to, you know, see some live action. And I uh, can't wait. Yeah, so let's talk a bit about why you're here. We'll obviously have the big fight, uh, Canelo versus Smith. Can I just get your prediction on that? Oh, it's a, it's a great fight. It's 50-50, you know. Um, Smith, he got the reach. He got he does have power. He knows how to box from the outside well. And um, Canelo, he's going to have to get in, get inside and, um, you know, figure it out, get to that body early on and try to take him into deep waters. But uh, it's just going to be a, it's a great fight. It's a 50-50 fight. Now, if you had to put your money on somebody, who would you put your money on? Uh, you know, for the business, Canelo. <laughs> Canelo. Let's go, Canelo. <laughs> Well, obviously, there's a lot of questions we have in regards to your own career. What's going on with that? We know that Billy Joe Saunders has called you out post-Murray fight. Is that something we could see in February? I mean, that's what I've been asking for for a long time now is, um, you know, get in there with the, you know, the elite guys, one of the best guys. He's one of them guys that we can make that happen because I have the WBO at the 160-pound division. Me moving up to 168, that should be an easy um, deal to make, and um, I'm ready to do that because at the end of the day, you know, <clears throat> Canelo, he's fighting um, Colin Smith. You know, he's fighting, you know, Triple G's. He's fighting these guys. We need to also stop fighting each other because we can't sit there and wait and see who Canelo picks. We need to, you know, get in the ring with each other so we can demand for Canelo to pick, the, pick us, and that's a fight that's going to help that. It's me and Billy Joe. Mm -hmm. I think you're doing the right thing, too. I love that tweet. Say my name. You got that from Breaking Bad, Walter Wright, <laughs> and you're calling out Billy Joe Saunders. That's what you need to do a little bit more of to, to get under their skin because, uh, you know, you're the champ. You're undefeated. You're an Olympian. You have all the pedigree you have the resume but you're, you're not I mean you, you don't go calling out fighters I love the fact that you did that you went out of your element and you tweeted out at BJ Saunders himself say my name I oh love yeah that. oh yeah it's, it's about that time you know it's about that time we make it happen that's right well Demetrius it's great to speak with you and uh, we're gonna go ahead and toss it on over to Eddie Hearn oh We got the San Antonio Spurs. Yeah. All right. Well, the press conference is just about to start. Um, let's talk a bit about that. Like, how excited are you for this fight? Well, I'm, I'm excited for many reasons. That, I mean, that's a man that we got to be talking about, too. Demetrius Andrade, who's one of the champs at middleweight. But right now we're talking about the super middleweights. And Callum Smith is, in my opinion, one of the best super middleweights in a red-hot division. Undefeated young fighters, Caleb Plant, David Benavidez, uh, BJ Saunders, like Andrade just said. So it's an exciting division, and Canelo's not afraid to move against the best. And that's why he's pound-for-pound pound number one in El Mundo. Pun intended. That's what they call <laughs> Callum Smith. <laughs> well, the press conference is just about to start, so we're going to go and pass it on over to Eddie Hearn. Well, welcome, everybody. It's an absolute pleasure to be here in San Antonio, ahead of a huge night of boxing, actually a huge weekend of boxing, live on the zone. Of course, here in San Antonio from the Alamo Dome, we bring spectators back for an epic super middleweight clash. The pound-for-pound -pound king, Canelo Alvarez, against the number 168 pounder in the world today, Callum Smith. But before that, we got so many great fights to bring you as two gentlemen join us up here now. Luis Valdez and Mark Castro, gentlemen, if you want to come up and join us here, thank you very much. A great undercard here and a great week it's been on the zone. Of course, last weekend, we got to saw the, see the unified heavyweight world champion Anthony Joshua defend his titles against Kubrat Pulev. And tonight, we're also in Milan for our Dizone Italy shows. And tomorrow night, Gennady Golovkin will fight Zerometa, 
for the IBO and IBF World Middleweight Championships before we finish the year in tremendous style with Canelo Alvarez. Firstly, we talk about the fight between Mark Castro and Luis Valdez. Welcome, gentlemen. This man to my right, I cannot believe we're finally here. Has this been the most frustrating period of any fighter? This young man turned professional. We announced his uh, professional debut for April, you turned pro. We had the big press conference at the Jesse Vargas fight. All of a sudden, the pandemic hit. All of a sudden, you got COVID. All of a sudden, you got injured. But here we go, Canelo Alvarez card, ready to go. Your professional debut, Mark Castro. Honestly, uh, Eddie, I feel like it was meant to happen like this. It was meant to be written like this. Uh, big stage, um, big, de big debut, and um, I hope to make a big statement Saturday night. How have you remained positive? Because, you know, I've sort of sent you a couple of messages during this, but I was just keep, kept thinking to myself, at what point do you turn around and you say, you know, this is just too much bad luck? Honestly, I try to stay positive the whole way. Um, I don't look at it as bad luck. I just, uh, every day, a uh, way to improve um, in anything in life. And just, um, this year has been tough for all of us. And I just feel like close it off good with a good, good, a good note. I know you wanted to uh, originally potentially make your debut on the Cinco de Mayo card on the Canelo Alvarez fight. You yeah. do end up making your debut in front of what will be 12,000 people at the Alamo Dome. Huge opportunity and a huge platform for you to make a big statement on Saturday. Yeah, that's why I feel like it was written like this. And um, when the opportunity came up, I was like, I want to fight on that card. and Let's do it. Luis Valdez, welcome. And your translator here as well with us, I believe, as well. Um, we know plenty about you. Very, very tough. You're up against a very good fighter here in Mark Castro. Are you ready to go? Estás listo para pelear. Tienes un oponente bastante difícil. Primero que nada, buenas tardes. Muchas gracias por darme la oportunidad de pelear aquí con Eddie Hearn en Mushroom. Eh, pues sí, eh, vengo bien preparado, vengo subiendo de división a la Super, Fairy, Super Pluma y pues vengo a dar lo mejor, a brindarlo, a brindar un buen espectáculo más que nada. And first of all, good afternoon. I'm really happy to be here, really happy to be on this card with Matchroom with Eddie Hearn. I'm going up to Super Featherweight and I'm ready to give a good show. Obviously, being Mexican, this is a big show for you, big opportunity. You're going to have a lot of support there in the arena yourself. Vas a tener mucho apoyo, siendo que también eres mexicano, ¿lo sientes? Sí, pues sí, eh, estar aquí en la cartelera, cartelera de Canelo Smith, eh, pues me da una gran motivación de, de representar a México una vez más, aquí en Estados Unidos. Yeah, being on this card, Canelo Smith, it gives me a good opportunity to represent Mexico. Thank you. And finally, Mark, a lot of people have been talking about you for a long, long time. A lot of people have been talking about your professional debut. Gets underway finally on Saturday. What should the fans live on the zone expect from Mark Castro moving forward? Honestly, just uh, expect a fighter, old school fighter, just come do my job and then just don't talk much and just do my job in the ring. Well, we can't wait to see your professional debut finally. Castro against Valdez. Gentlemen, if we could have a head, head to head up here, please. Big signing for a matchroom boxing with Mark Castro. As you know, he has a spectacular amateur career um, at 177 wins, seven losses. Tell me about what you think about him. No, much, much awaited pro debut. I mean, this kid uh, is an excellent fighter, excellent pedigree, but he's had some bad luck uh, with, like Eddie Hearn just uh, finished mentioning, the, 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 the COVID, the injuries, everything, the postponements. But this is destiny, and this is boxing, and I, li I love his attitude. I love the fact that he said, uh, you know, that, that's what it was meant to be. It was the best thing that happened to him, and that's the way you have to think in boxing because you're going to get a lot of punches thrown at you outside the ring, and you got to adapt, and you got to keep fighting. I found it interesting because Mark has actually mentioned before that he really didn't plan to become a, a boxer. 
it was something his father wanted him to do, but he ultimately ended up being a boxer because he couldn't become a football player or a basketball player because he didn't make the height requirements. <laughs> well, <laughs> de destiny intervened there again. He's not tall enough to be a basketball player. Matter of fact, none of us really plan to be a fighter. We kind of just, we, we gravitate towards it or we need an outlet or, or something, but none of us grow up saying, hey, I want to get punched in the face well, for a living. But what was your moment though? I needed to graduate high school, but let's not talk about me. We're talking about <laughs> Mark Castro, who's an excellent fighter. No, like your moment where you, when, what made you want to be a fighter? I, I just told you I needed to graduate oh, need, okay. high school. I needed credits, and uh, that's why I decided to get punched in the face for a living, yeah, Michelle. Yeah. Well, we just <laughs> wrapped up the interview with Demetrius Andrade, and uh, it's exciting times to think that we could possibly get the fight with him and Billy Joe Saunders. What do you think of that fight? Can you say who you favor? And no, because they're <laughs> both they're both champions. They're both undefeated. They're both southpaws. Southpaws hate fighting other southpaws. And I think that's another reason they're 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 not really interested in, in fighting. But Andre, I love the fact that he's calling people out now. Yeah. We know that before he he said, no, I'm just gonna fight who they put in front of me. That's not what he has to do now. He's the champ. He's undefeated. He needs to make a case for himself, mm -hmm. and that's exactly what he's doing to get the attention from from champions like like Billy Joe Saunders. Well, we're going to go ahead and um, pass it on to Eddie Hearn. Thank you, guys. Uh, back again. Great fight here. Ray Ford back in the ring. And this, for me, don't want to embarrass you, Ray Ford, but you are becoming one of my favorite, favorite young prospects. You step up. You fight anybody at any time. This time against Lopez. Tough fight for you. Big step up here on uh, Saturday night. You ready? You ready for this? You took the call at late notice, but as you always say on your social media, you stay ready. Stay ready. Uh, it's been actually this is not the first opponent that we had. We had three undefeated guys, uh, a five and zero, ten and zero, and a twenty six and zero. And I guess none of them took the fight. So uh, Saturday night, we're gonna show y'all why they didn't take the fight. I've seen from you, your style really changed since you've come through the amateur system. We know earlier on, you know, you you like to box and move. Now you've been sitting down on your punches. You've been working hard in the gyms, great sparring with Tiafimo Lopez and Shakur and these kind of level fighters now. Do you feel that you're on that level yourself as well? Most definitely. Uh, the only thing with me is just getting the experience. I'm new in the pro game, so the more fights I get, the more recognition I'm going to get, and pretty soon I'm going to be on that level, and a lot of people are going to start putting me in a conversation with those other top athletes. You see that when you turn pro, there's a lot of noise about a lot of fighters. But you are definitely the one now that's willing to step up and move quicker than all those other guys, you know, your U.S. teammates that you turned pro with. Is that a decision that you've made to get yourself recognized and to sort of jump away from that pack? Most definitely. And I feel like I'm a special fighter. And uh, I feel like the skills that I possess in the ring, not many people can uh, deal with it. And as far as, you know, I looked at my division in the weight class and the world champions that's here, I feel like they can't do nothing with me as well. So, uh Pretty soon, everybody will see that. Well, welcome, welcome. Big fight for you on Saturday on the Canelo undercard as well. Face, facing a top young prospect, but this is a big step up for him against you on Saturday night. Yeah, no, thank you guys for having me. I think, um, you know, you, like you said it, I know I know he's a, he's a top prospect, but I definitely feel like this is my show to win. This is my show. It's, it's in, in my backyard, in front of my people. You know, Canelo being the biggest uh, name in boxing, uh, me being Mexican, uh, you know, I know what the business is. I know there's an A side and B side, but uh, this is definitely this is definitely my fight to win. And and uh, regardless of you know me taking this short notice or not, I'm gonna come in and show everybody why I belong here, why I earned to be here. How big would that win be for you, like on this undercard, you know, in front of your people here as well against a top prospect on on the zone? It'd be a massive, massive moment for your career. Could be life changing. Oh, of course, you know, and, and I feel comfortable being up here with you guys. I feel comfortable being on the show uh, because I know the stakes. I know that where, where it could potentially get me and uh, these opportunities that, that you can't pass up. So uh, I'm ready to go in there and, and take it. Ray, finally, looking forward to this one. This, this young man talk, talks a good game. He's here with his people. He's here coming to win. This is so exciting, isn't it, now? It's kind of like the stabilizers are off. You're ready to go. Of course. Uh, I respect his energy. Um, to what it seems like he's gonna come to fight and that's what we want. We don't want any easy fights. And uh, moving forward, after I get him out the way, y'all can start keep uh, stepping up in competition with me because I don't need to be baby. I got the skills, so I'm ready for anybody. Good stuff, one of the best young prospects in boxing. Ray Ford takes the big step up 
on Saturday night. Gentlemen, if we could have a head-to-head -head here, please. Ford Lopez, two southpaws, two young guys, hungry. Uh, tell me a bit about, or oh, we actually got Eddie Hearn joining us just now. We'll just let Eddie do all the talking. Yeah, just He's a Eddie. great talker. Join us, Eddie. <laughs> this is very fiddly. People are coming in from all angles. I know. <laughs> Let's talk a bit about this mm. fight. Well, Ray Ford, for me, uh, you know, was part of the, the initial team that we had when we launched the zone. You know, one of our big ambitions one of our big ambitions was to go out and, and sign the top prospects coming through from US boxing. We did that. And now they kind of get to a level where it's almost approaching sink or swim time. And I think that's so exciting because you get to find out who, you know, who can crack it in this game, who has the minerals in this game, and who are the ones that just signed the big deal with us initially and haven't managed to make the progress. You know, you've seen great fighters. Rashad Matty boxes tomorrow night. You've seen Nikita Ababi, sometimes hot and cold. Mark Castro is an outstanding young talent, but Ray Ford, for me, is the one that's coming through on the blind side. Earlier on, his performances, it's a bit like Danny R. Yelusinov. You know, you watched him earlier on, very yeah. amateur style, and you know, didn't look like he punched that hard. All of a sudden, started to understand what the professional game was about. Started fighting in a pocket a lot more, started sitting down on his punches a lot more. And Ray Ford has just been working in the gym. And, you know, we had Julio Cesar Martinez. Uh, unfortunately, he wasn't available to fight in this fight. We started to look at other fights. And Ray Ford went, look, I'll fight anyone. Step me up over eight rounds, ten rounds, it doesn't matter. We found this opponent who's very good, very dangerous. He's a local guy. We know he's going to have a lot of support here as well. And Ray was like, I'm ready. That's you why we call that man the savage. I know, but he's been sparring with Tiafimo. He's been sparring with Shakur Stevenson. He mixes his with all that, guys. This, for me, could be, you know, could be a real dark horse of, of the young fighters that turn pro with Matrim. I really believe this guy has the pedigree. I think he has the style. He's starting to become a lot more exciting now as well. And, you know, I'm excited to see his progress. Well, we got William, jo William and Jones next. So we're going to go ahead and send you on okay. back your to... Your talent is needed <laughs> elsewhere, Eddie. <laughs> we appreciate your time, Ed. <laughs> ammo, oh. Ammo making his way to the stage right now. Ammo Williams, love that nickname. <laughs> I know. From one bad southpaw to another. With the main man from Texas, Ammo Williams. Williams against Jones here, and another big, big step up for one of our amateur stars. Ammo, you've been blazing up my social media for the opportunity. Some people haven't been boxing that much during the pandemic. You boxed in Mexico. Now you get a chance on a huge, huge card. You look happy to be here. Man, I'm more than happy to be here. Um, I'm extremely excited to be here, and I'm super excited to show my veteran in being here like fighting in madison square garden with a crowd o2 with a crowd uh dallas my dallas fight with a crowd i'm used to this now you know and um i'm being groomed into really being a champion i get to show how much poise i have in a situation like this i get to show how much poise i have on a card like this and how much growth i really made especially in the gym um as everybody knows i'm, I'm super young in the sport and uh I just get to show the leaps that I've made. I get to show how much mentally stronger I've become in a in a ring, especially weathering that ten month storm. Uh, so I'm I'm very excited. I'm extremely happy to be here. When you look at that growth, you know we know you've been stepping up the opponents, and on Saturday you have your first big step up, really. But when you talk about that traveling, those experiences, you know the O2 Arena, even your last fight in Mexico, yeah, yeah, you know, all of those are, are really vital for a young fighter trying to to reach the next stage of his career. Yeah, all of the experience I have have combined into making me who I am today. And uh, like we got in, in Isaiah, we got an opponent that has doubled the amount of fights as me. Again, the last guy I fought in Mexico, he had 31 fights. I fought him at 5-0, and, and I also fought him at 7,000-plus elevation coming from Houston, you know, that sea level. And that just made me fight a completely different style. I had to show, you know, that I really understand how fighting and combat works. I couldn't step on the gas like you guys normally see me. I had to be a lot more 
you know, strategic in that fight. I had to pick my spots a lot better. I had to take my rest when it was time to take my rest. I had to keep myself, my heart rate lower. And uh, all of these experiences that I'm having are grooming me to be a world champion. And again, it's, it's grooming me to be a world champion pretty fast, or at least to get those opportunities pretty fast, because I'm the guy that is always going to step up. Um, this is nothing new for me ever since I began. I've been I've been a guy who uh, people kind of said, like, slow down a bit, kid, slow down a bit, kid. But, you know, for me, having challenges, you know, having a nine and three that never been stopped in front of me um, is exciting for me. And it's another challenge. It's another opportunity for me to show the world that I am the best. Isaiah, uh, welcome. Uh, this is a big step up for Ammo Williams. Mm -hmm. You ready to go? Massive opportunity, massive stage, huge card. You look excited. I can see it in your eyes. Well, <clears throat> I'm real excited to fight Elmo. Um, he's a really good fighter. You know, I, I, as I'm watching some of his footage, I could tell that he likes to come forward. So he got definitely got a bull that's going to go there and go go to the fences with him. Um, I'm just excited to, to you know be here and show, show my talent as well and um, have the opportunity to even, you know, fight a guy that, you know, as Elmo, you know. A lot of these young prospects coming through the U.S. scene, they do get big opportunities. You know, he's boxed all over the world as well. We know those opportunities haven't come for fighters that didn't have a stellar amateur career and didn't go to the Olympics and stuff like that. But this is a big moment for you in your career, and, and a victory on Saturday could be life-changing for you. Um, a victory on Saturday could be a, a good big life changer and um, <clears throat> I'm really ready for that and I'm like I said may the best man win we're going to step down we're going to have fun in that ring we're going to tear the ropes off if we can and we're going to you know we're just going to go there uh, uh, both fighters you know come with their A game and let's see who comes out on top you know. Ammo finally for you we had Ray Ford up here a lot of you guys turned pro with us when we launched with the zone here he was a guy that Started slow, you know, and with the amateur style. Now he's sitting down on these punches, being a lot more aggressive. You came out wild out of the blocks. <laughs> there was no messing around when you turned pro. Do you feel like now you're you're calming down, you're settling down? You can't just be reckless ammo as you step up the opposition against guys like this. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think one of the biggest reasons why I turned pro so fast is because I had the type of style that would cater to being a you know, dangerous professional athlete. So when I came out and I had the four round fights, I was more frantic. I was more high pace, high energy to get the knockouts and things like that. But now as the rounds get longer and the opponents get better, I get to really strategically show that I can set up these shots and set up these punches and continue to knock out. Also, I get to show that this is not me being a knockout puncher. Me being a finisher is not something I have to grow into. This is something that actually got me signed. I came out of the amateurs and got signed quick because of my dangerous style and things like that. So now y'all get to see over time me just polish that. Y'all don't have to watch me grow into a person that can finish or grow into a person that's willing to sit down and trade and stuff like that. I've been that. I just did it at a faster pace before. So I'm extremely excited to just show that you know, the dangerous ammo that they've always promoted in me is, is real. This is a real thing, and uh, y'all are just going to see me become more dangerous over the course of my career, more fun to watch, more skill, more season, and just able to have more fun in the ring. Thank you. Well, it's a big step up for Ammo Williams, one of Texas and U.S.'s hot young amateur stars looking to have fun and do his thing on Saturday night live on The Zone. Gentlemen, if we could have a head-to-head -head here, please. Williams versus Jones. I don't know. I have a feeling this is going to be a good one. No, it's always going to be a good one when you got a, a man nicknamed Ammo. <laughs> I mean, he's a, he's a power puncher, but he's a smart power puncher. And it's always exciting to see how these young prospects, that, that how they're going to react to fighters that aren't going to go anywhere. You know, uh, Jones never been stopped in 12 fights, mm -hmm. you know, nine and three. So this is an excellent opportunity for Ammo Williams to show that he's not just all power, that he could be a technician. He could break down an opponent, especially one that has a little bit more experience than him. Emma Williams keeping himself in the headlines when he uh, released some sparring footage that 
sparked a bit of controversy there. That's a no-no. There. That's a no-no. That's a no-no. A a anyone that knows in boxing, there's a there's a hidden rule that you don't you don't air out stuff that happens in, in the gym because whether you're doing well or, or, or you're getting hurt, you don't air that out. But you know, he 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 felt bad about it. He actually get, took the criticism. He said he learned from it. It built character, and that's the thing that makes Amin Williams such a special young fighter and young man. It's the way he speaks. He's so articulate, but he's a beast in the ring. But he also sparked a bit of, you know, back and forth between Billy Joe Saunders, right. Josh Taylor, um, Anthony Fowler, mm, setting up some a possible fight. I heard that, you know, Amma was saying that he was open to fighting Anthony Fowler. Ouch. Not yet. I would say, uh, hold on, young man. I know he wants to prove uh, that he's uh, King Kong and, and he wants to take over the world. But right now, I think uh, he, he's best suited doing what he's doing, building his resume. Keep knocking these guys out. Six and oh, five knockouts. Very difficult to do. And if you could put a feather in your hat and stop, stop Isaiah Jonas and be the first one to stop Isaiah Jones, that's a great thing for him. Well, we have uh, the next press conference about to begin, and we're going to go ahead and pass it on over to Eddie Hearn. Thank you, guys. We move to the heavyweight division now, the division that everyone's always talking about it. Of course, fresh off the World Unified Heavyweight Championship on the zone last Saturday night when Anthony Joshua defended his Unified World Championship. Now we move on to Sanchez against Fernandez. It's Mexico against Cuba. A great opportunity for Frank Sanchez to continue his rise in the heavyweight division. We'll start with you, Frank. Welcome, welcome. A uh, huge show to be on. You're doing big things in the heavyweight division and an exciting fight for you on Saturday. Frank, estás haciendo cosas grandes. Es una pelea importante para ti este sábado. Sí, es una cartelera bien grande y es una oportunidad que tengo para demostrar que, que, que soy mejor y vengo, vengo con esas ganas. Muchas gracias. Yes, it's a huge card and I have the opportunity to be here and show that I'm the best. Thank you so much. You're being very active at the moment, and you know, you've had a number of wins very quickly. Where do you think you sit now in terms of the world championship contenders? Ha estado muy activo. ¿Y dónde piensa usted que cabe ahora en cuestión a todos los otros oponentes en cuestión del mundo? Bueno, ya yo estoy listo para, para grandes cosas y solo esperando la oportunidad y me mantengo demostrando, demostrando que soy mejor. I'm ready. I'm ready for huge things, and I'm just waiting for the opportunity, and I'm continuing, just continue waiting for the best and preparing for the best. Of course, uh, part of Team Eddie Reynoso, and you heavily involved in, in the Mexican side. You're fighting a Mexican on Saturday night who's going to have great support as well. Do we expect to see an explosive knockout performance from Frank Sanchez? Es parte del equipo de Eddie Reynoso y va a pelear contra un mexicano, un equipo mexicano con el cual entrena. Podemos esperar ver un gran knockout. Esta, este sábado. Sí, claro que sí, para eso, para eso me preparé y a eso vine, a, a demostrar que soy mejor y, y la oportunidad que se dé poder derribar al contrario. Yes, of course, this is what I prepared for, this is why I'm here and the opportunity to be able to just knock out, knock out my opponent. Well, welcome and good opportunity for you as well. Mexican heavyweights um, always have massive potential to go on and become huge stars. Massive opportunity for you on this card on Saturday night. Canelo Alvarez undercard. Thousands of Mexicans in attendance and watching worldwide. It's an opportunity for you to be able to take advantage of this card and be able to show the world what you can do. Yes, of course. First of all, thank you very much for this opportunity. And, well, I'm a fighter who never stops training. I'm preparing all the year, all the year I'm doing sparring. Eh, y siempre estoy listo, siempre estoy listo para, para una pelea y pues bueno, listo para demostrar de lo que estamos hechos los mexicanos. First of all, thank you. I'm a boxer that always trains, always stays prepared. I'm always sparring and I'm ready to show what I can do and ready to show in Mexico what I can do. Obviously, in the heavyweight division, you're only ever one victory away from a, a huge fight. Victory on Saturday, this platform against a world-ranked fighter against Frank Chan Sanchez would be a huge moment for your career. Sería un gran momento para ti. Sabemos que en esta división un triunfo puede llevarte a grandes cosas. Eh, ¿Qué tan importante es esta, esta pelea? No, muy importante, muy, muy importante. Y nosotros venimos a ganar. Nosotros no venimos a participar o no venimos a, a, a nada más a, a subirnos al ring a trabajar. Nosotros venimos a ganar. Eh, vengo preparado mental y físicamente. Vengo listo este, para, lo que, para lo que sea. Y pues bueno, tenemos todo que ganar y nada que perder. 
I'm ready, I'm here to win. I'm not here just to participate or to go in the ring and exercise. I'm here to win and I'm ready to do whatever I need to do to get that win. Thank you, gentlemen. 10 rounds in the heavyweight division. The big boys go to it. Sanchez against Fernandez, gentlemen. If we can have a head-to-head -head here, please. Sanchez versus Fernandez, another exciting heavyweight fight we can look forward to this weekend. How do you I see this fight going? I Two big boys. I'm going to say do not blink. Both these guys <laughs> either knock you out or get knocked out. Try well, actually, Fernandez gets knocked out trying. And for the Cuban flash, I mean, he's, he's just so exciting in the era of huge middleweights. Who would think that... Uh, uh, a fighter that's six foot four is going to be, you know, a smaller heavyweight, but he has the athleticism, he has the power, he has the backing, and he has this man in uh, promoting him, Eddie Hearn. Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, Frank Sanchez has really come from nowhere. I mean, you know, a, a very talented heavyweight that's moving very, very quickly. I love the fact that we've managed to bring in a Mexican heavyweight, right. you know, on a show like this. So it's <laughs> like, if you were going to try, right, now you're going to really try. Right. Because as I said in the heavyweight division, one win can completely transform his career as well. And I think you're always crying out for a big Mexican heavyweight, aren't you? I mean, Andy Ruiz right. you know, did a good job to become Mexican, first Mexican heavyweight world champion. And someone like Fernandez, if he could get the victory, but he's coming up against a very well-schooled heavyweight in Frank Sanchez. Someone that's very dangerous, has power in both hands top training team as well it's going to be very difficult for him but as you say someone's getting knocked out no but no touching on the fact that he's fighting a mexican he's training with the pound for pound best mexican uh, in the world with eddie, eddie reynoso and canelo you, so he's getting that cuban power the cuban amateur pedigree with the mexican style of fighting it's just a perfect blend and he gets to display it on the biggest uh, undercard you could possibly think of with canelo yeah i think both guys are going to be trying to end this one early right to be honest with you so don't blink don't blink in this one do not blink I'm gonna, I'm gonna go again. I'm gonna take that mic, Ed. And you're get you, that you yeah. There you go. Okay. Right, a little order before we go into the main course. Two great trainers here ahead of a massive fight on Saturday night, live on the zone. The WBC, WBA, Ring Magazine World Super Middleweight Championships here, just behind us. Two great trainers. We want to speak to the minds behind the fighters. Joseph, I'm going to start with you. Welcome, welcome. Oh, I'll start with you. I'll start with you. We're going to go to the champion side oh, first, Joe. Um, massive fight, massive opportunity. These are the nights that since Callum Smith won the WBSS, he's wanted for a long, long time. Strange circumstances for everyone, but he looks in tremendous shape and ready to take this opportunity. Yeah, it's a, a fight Callum has always wanted since he uh, became world champion in Jeddah. Um, it's a huge opportunity. You've just got to look at the silverware around us. Canelo, ring champion. Callum Smith, ring champion. I think there's only been 16 fights in the history that two ring fighters have fought each other. And Callum Smith becomes the third British fighter behind Ricky Hatton and Joe Calzaghe. So that tells you the magnitude of the event, the fight. It's the biggest fight of the year. You've got two athletes in the peak. Uh, Canelo age 30, Callum Smith age 30, and you can see the intensity of Eddie training with Canelo, that that's a huge backhanded compliment. They know they're in a really tough fight and they need the best Canelo to show up to be the best Callum Smith, and that's what makes it going to make it a bigger challenge for us. Um, I said before, um, people say about Callum Smith's performance of John Ryder, um, but when Callum Smith, when it comes to the big fights, he turns up, unfortunately, Canelo always turns up, so it's, I think it's about time. Canelo has a, a bad night at the office. I think that obviously you've been here before with Liam Smith, who put up a great performance against Canelo. You've seen him up close. You feel like you've got the game plan locked in with Callum and you know what it takes to beat the pound-for-pound pound number one. I'm guessing you see him as the pound-for-pound pound number one as well. Yeah, 100% Canelo's pound-for-pound pound number one. You've just got to look at his resume, the fighters, his fought, the challenges he's come. And like I say, he's, he's a superstar of boxing. Um, as far as the game plan, Liam Smith, Canelo, it was a total different fight to what Callum Smith, Canelo was. There's things that we learned that week, um, being in the corner, being involved with Canelo fight week, but 
this isn't a normal Canelo fight week. There isn't the huge fans. There isn't the Mexican band playing music. It isn't, it's, it's weird for all of us and most probably for Canelo as well. He's used to having a, a huge fanfare of supporters and 50, 60,000 in arena. Um, but does, that suit, does that suit Callum? Is that, is that good news for us? Well, I don't know. I think um, the 12, 14,000 that'll be in there will make it sound like it's a 60,000 in there. But for, for Callum Smith, it's very much like Jeddah. We went over there with a, a, a polite crowd there. There wasn't your, your raucous, uh, um, um, vocal uh, fans there where we usually get in the UK or in America. So it's, uh, no, I think Callum, Callum's Callum and the same with Canelo. I think they're both athletes, they're both professional and they both know that when the bell rings, nothing matters. It's just them two in the ring. And I think that's the same for Callum. I saw one of your comments, uh, which was, you feel that Callum Smith needs to win this fight by knockout, you know, you feel that obviously being over here, you know, in, in San Antonio, big support for Canelo Alvarez, is that the game plan? You go into this fight trying to end the fight inside the distance? I wouldn't say inside the distance, it was a, th a thing of, um, we've been over American before, we've obviously, like I say, Liam's fought Canelo, Callum Johnson's fought BTBF, Stephen Smith's fought Pedraza, and we know we're back at home in the UK, the officials most probably help the fighters a little bit and protect them. Once that bell goes, it's a dog-eat-dog -dog fight. You've seen Callum Johnson getting hit on the back of the head against Beer to BF. Pedraza's, uh, Stephen Smith's performance against Pedraza not reflected on the scorecards. So for us, for, for me to sit at home and devise a game plan to win on points, you might as well take me off to, to the asylum. Now, that, that's not the case. We've got to go in there and be primed, loaded. And the same with Canelo. Canelo is an explosive puncher. He, from a standing position, he's power in both hands. And like you said, this fight can be ended by either or all, but the game plan is, is to win every round and then that if we've won it well enough, the judges are fair, they do the job. And whilst I'm here, I think this has got to be the beginning of a great rivalry that could end up being a trilogy in this type of, uh, between these two fighters. Joe, we'll come back to you shortly. Eddie, welcome. Um, I know that you're excited about this fight, excited by the challenge. One thing I found when we were discussing the fight, you, and Canelo Alvarez, you love a challenge. You love to fight the best. Eddie, buenas tardes, bienvenido. Eh, primero, sé que está emocionado por el reto, el gran reto. Eh, cuando tuvimos conversaciones, esa era su emoción más grande, este reto para Canelo. ¿Qué sientes sobre eso? Sí, pues estamos muy emocionados. Queremos nosotros seguir este, haciendo historia, querer enfrentar a los mejores boxeadores. Yes, we're very excited. We want to continue making history. We want to continue uh, fighting the best opponents. Sin duda alguna, Callum es uno de los mejores 168 de libras. 68 libras ha ganado pues varios campeonatos. Es un peleador muy muy peligroso con mucho talento, pero pues son las peleas que queremos y estamos realmente emocionados de estar aquí con con toda esta gente, volver a a reaparecer en el boxeo después de más de un año. Creo que es muy importante para para el boxeo y más que nada que and there's no doubt here that Callum Smith is the best at the 168 pounds, and we want to fight the best. We are ready to fight the best. We're very excited to be here, very excited to see everybody. It's been a year, and uh, we're very excited to be back and show, you know, that we're the best in the world. Joe talked about the lack of the normality of a Canelo Alvarez fight week, you know, thousands of people, the grand entrance at MGM. We will have 12,000 there, not 80,000 or 70,000 at the weekend. That might be good news for Callum Smith. Are you ready uh, and have you embraced this different kind of environment that we've received through the pandemic? Yo hablo de la diferencia. Mencionó como eh, a diferencia de cuando son 80 mil personas, que está la banda, que está todo el mundo, que ahorita son menos, que son los 13 mil, los 14 mil que se van a presentar. Que están listos ustedes porque para Callum él siente que esto es bueno. ¿Cómo lo ven ustedes esto? ¿Cómo les cae esto a ustedes? Pues realmente aquí va a haber 12 mil personas, pero van a parecer que hay 100 mil porque la verdad los mexicanos son muy, muy, muy gritones, todos van a estar abalanzados sobre, sobre Saúl, eh, al final de cuentas va a estar nada más Saúl arriba del cuadrilátero con Smith, eh, la gente se influye, claro que sí, para sentirte más arropado, estamos acostumbrados a estar en Las Vegas, que haya más gente, en esta ocasión estamos más enfocados, estamos más tranquilos en, en, nuestro, en nuestro campamento, aquí en el hotel, Eh, previo a la pelea y este lo que sí les digo es que se van a escuchar como si fueran 100,000 ese día de, del sábado. Yes, it's going to be a lot smaller, 12,000 
114,000. However, Mexicans were very loud, were very enthusiastic. So we will sound as though there's 100,000 there. So yes, it's been very different. It's been calm, it's been quiet. We've been focused on it. We've been staying in our room, focused, concentrated. And you know, at the end of the day, it's going to be Canelo and uh, Smith on the ring. However, Mexico will be supporting him and the arena will sound as though there are 100,000 people cheering for him. Joe mentioned that the aim is to win this fight inside the distance by knockout. Um, do you expect an explosive fight and do you believe that your man can win this fight inside the distance as well and is that the game plan? Yo expresó que él siente que con la distancia va a poder lograr un knockout. ¿Ustedes piensan que con lo explosivo que es Saúl que él va a poder lograr un knockout a pesar de la distancia que, que acaban de estar tratando que le va a poner? Pues va a ser una pelea explosiva, los dos son dos, este, dos boxeadores que suelen terminar sus peleas de, de manera explosiva. Vamos a ver quién, quién, este, quién logra conectar, vamos a ver quién logra demostrar arriba en el ring quién es el mejor. Entonces va a ser una pelea, como dijo yo, va a ser una pelea explosiva y esperemos que, que le guste a toda la gente. Pero lo que sí estoy seguro es que vamos a salir con la mano en alto. It will be an explosive fight. Both fighters are explosive. So we'll see who connects the best and you know, try to connect. And as Joe mentioned, they are both explosive. They like to end their fights with an explosion. And what I can say is that we will come off the ring you know, with our hands up high. And finally, one question for both of you, Joe. People talk about this as an upset. One could be one of the greatest British victories of all time. Do you see it like that? Do you see yourself as the underdog going into this fight? It's strange, isn't it? The number one fighter in the division. WBA champion, Ring Magazine champion, but obviously up against a pound for pound number one. This would be a huge moment for British boxing if Callum Smith could win this fight and become pound for pound number one on Saturday night. Yeah, definitely. I, I do feel it's um, for the people that don't know boxing, it'd be huge. But the people that do but know boxing, I can't understand why the odds are so wide. Uh, so wide. Canelo, at age 30, is now fighting someone his own age, age 30, and I think this is the first time in his career he's fought someone his own age. They've always been a bit older. Callum Smith is the world champion. We are expected to be the underdog. Canelo Alvarez is a superstar. He's the pound for pound number one. And um, he's not a bigger underdog is what people are making out. So it'll be huge and it'll be a great success story for everyone back home in England and in Liverpool. But smile in everyone's face in the lockdown. Um, but to us close to Callum, we've always been confident that I've got the right kid here to do the job. And finally, Eddie as well. This is your life. You know, we know the saying, no boxing, no life. What does this represent for you that Canelo Alvarez is a man who wants the biggest challenges? He's the one that wants to achieve greatness in the sport of boxing. Y finalmente, Eddie, esta es su vida. Su vida que es no life, no boxing. Eh, ¿Qué es con Canelo? ¿Qué es la, las metas? ¿Qué es lo que ven ustedes eh, sucediendo con, en cuestión del de boxeo? Pues seguir avanzando, seguir creciendo, creo que Saúl todavía tiene mucho que dar al boxeo, es joven todavía, está en la mejor etapa de su carrera, eh, lo más importante que es un deportista al 100%, es un deportista comprometido con su trabajo, eh, él tiene todavía mucho que dar al boxeo, estamos motivados como nunca hemos estado, más motivados mejor dicho, entonces vienen cosas muy grandes, Eh, el sábado vamos a dar otro paso adelante a lo que queremos seguir haciendo y, y pues más que nada eh, seguir adelante. Let's continue moving forward. Continue moving forward. Saul is still a young fighter, still a lot to do in boxing and bring into bring to boxing. So you know he has a lot to give. We want to continue making history, and this Saturday is going to be huge. And mostly, it's continue moving forward. That's the most important thing for us. Well, thank you, Eddie Reynoso, Joe Gallagher, two great trainers, the minds behind the men on Saturday night, ready to do battle. Back over to Michelle and Sergio. Is it just me, or you could sort of sense the tension on the stage between the two trainers? No, anytime the trainers get to go face to face, it goes to show you how important they are to the greatness of their corner. Joe Gallagher, a top trainer across the pond, Eddie Reynoso becoming one of the greatest. I mean, that's those are the brains behind the machine, you know. So it's it's great to see them getting their attention for one and two to see what what their their strategy, their game plan, and their temperament is too. Because you feed off the trainers, not just the fighters. Speaking of the strategy, we had Joe Gallagher mention that 
you know, they're looking to uh, basically go for a stoppage. And I almost don't blame them considering how, you know, scorecards have been as of recent. You, you kind of can't take the risk when you're coming over to someone else's backyard. No, absolutely. And that, I think that's the right thing to do because with a fighter like Canelo, you know, you have to, you have to really hurt him. You have to really, you don't want to put yourself in the position of Golovkin who thinks he won both fights against Canelo. You actually want to make it decisive. And the only way to do that is to hurt a superstar, to drop a superstar. And if you can get the knockout, Absolutely, get the knockout. Well, we're looking to start the main event press conference. We're gonna pass it on over to Eddie Hearn. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Sergio. Um, just wanna take this time to thank everybody involved with this huge, huge event. This has been a tremendous end to the year on the zone. This fight for me is the 2020 fight of the year. When you get the number one of any division facing the pound for pound number one of boxing, this is very, very special. And I wouldn't be able to make this fight if the fighters didn't want to compete, if they didn't want to chase greatness. And on Saturday night in front of 12,000 people, and I can't tell you how good it will feel to even have that many people back in the arena at the Alamo Dome, you will witness the fight of the year for the WBC, WBA, Ring Magazine, 168 pound world championship. And right now I wanna bring up two great fighters. Firstly, if we could bring up Callum Smith, WBA, Ring Magazine, 168 pound number one, fighter in a division of course the pound for pound number one multi-weight world champion as well please Canelo Alvarez can you join us to the stage as well thank you so much gentlemen good mate you welcome we'll start with a champion Callum I've never seen anyone so relaxed in such a mega fight since I've promoted boxing from the moment this fight was discussed from the moment that we were negotiating the fight, from even this week in the hotel, super relaxed. Is that because you're in a great frame of mind? You know you're ready. This is your moment. Yeah, it's just I'm, it's, I'm a relaxed person anyway. I'm quite laid back, but I'm in the position I've always wanted to be ever since I was a little boy, and especially since turning professional. The goal was to always reach the very top, be involved in the biggest fights possible on the biggest stage for, for the biggest prizes. And I'm here now, so I've got to just enjoy it. There's no, no bigger fight possible for me. I finally got the fight I wanted, and... I'm in a very good, good place, mentally and physically. I feel really good and I'm ready to perform. And I'm just excited. I can't get you know, waked up or nervous or anything unless say I'm in a position I've always wanted to be in. Obviously, turned pro many years ago with Matchroom. Many felt like you should have been in the Olympic team. You used that to really drive your success forward. I think one thing that people haven't really picked up on in this fight is I don't think you've barely lost a round mm. as a professional fighter. Obviously, undefeated. But, you know, obviously the fight against John Ryder was the fight. You, yeah. you did lose some rounds in that fight. But yeah. before that, against George Groves, against Hassan and Dam, you know, for the European Championship, against Rebras, against Rocky Fielding, a, a pretty straightforward career so far to this point. Yeah, definitely. And I think that's what, you know, I always want to be a world champion and imagine there'd be a few Rocky moments on the way. And I, I've become a world champion and still didn't really know how good I was. And I don't think people knew how good I was. I kind of done it all my own way. I never really had a tough test along the way and it was more, let's say, credit to myself. I made you know, a lot of tough fights on paper easy, but I sat down and said, well, what more do I want? I've won my world title. Now I want the biggest fights possible. I want to test myself against the biggest names in the sport and Canelo certainly is that. He, he's proven he's, he's done a, you know, multiple weights. He, he's a superstar. He's the pound for pound best, but I believe I, I'm good enough to compete at that level also. I've proved I'm a world class fighter. Now I want to prove I can compete at the, the elite level. We saw the head-to-head, -head and you know, as we've seen against Rocky Fielding and Sergei Kovalev, yeah. you know, those pictures go global and everybody gasps at the size difference as well. But you bring something very different to this fight as well, don't you? You bring the power, you bring the youth, the experience as well. But you difference, obviously, got to make this size difference play in this fight. But you know, you, you look at it as an advantage, but no, you have to make it count. Yeah, I believe so, but I'm not just I'm not just a big lump with limited ability. I believe I've got skills to go with it. I don't think I believe in being in a position that I'm in now if I didn't have no skills and ability and no tactically I believe we've got it we've got it spot on and I've just got to perform and perform and do exactly what I know I can. And you know, I've watched Canelo over the years and as a fan I enjoy watching him but I've always watched him believing if that was me in there I, I believe I can beat him. I've always felt stylistically I've got the style to do it. And I've got a chance to prove it. Said to Joe as well, obviously, this is people talking about a great upset, if you like. To you, is it an upset? I mean, we know that you're number one in the division. You deserve to be here. You deserve yeah. this opportunity. But you see this much more as a 50-50 fight than some of the bookmakers. Yeah, for me, obviously, listen, I like my chances in this fight. I wouldn't call for a fight that I believe I lose. I've been asking for this fight because I believe I, believe I win it. 
I understand I'm the underdog. You know, you look at your social media, people, a lot of people don't really give me a chance in this fight, but I've been here before. I was the underdog in my world title fight and event, and it gives me a little bit more motivation, a little bit of a point to prove prove my worth. And no, I believe I deserve to be in this fight. I'm number one in the world. I, I work very hard to be in the position I'm, I'm at. And now I'm enjoying the, you know, the, the luxury of being world champion and being involved in these big fights, which, like I said before, I've dreamed of being in since I was a little boy. Obviously, you had that experience of boxing around the world. You made your debut in America a few years ago. You boxed in Saudi Arabia against George Groves. You boxed at Madison Square Garden against Hassan and Dam. You boxed in all the big arenas in the UK as well. Do you think that calmness will put you in good stead on Saturday night? I remember when we were scrambling around trying to make this fight, when yeah. Canelo said he was going to announce it on his Instagram. <laughs> I think you went to bed first and just <laughs> turned your phone off and said to, to Sean and Joe and yeah. the team, yeah, whatever, just let me know. Yeah. Yeah, was, it, it, the, the negotiations were, were long and, and mentally draining, but I always just wanted this fight regardless of you know, where it was in the world. I just wanted to, always, I wanted to be in the biggest fight possible, and this always was the minute the minute I knew he was going to campaign at 168. I knew I had to just keep winning and make sure the only fight that made the most sense was me, and I worked my way to number one in the division, and I finally got that fight, but I'm not here to just you know, be involved in a, in a superstar fight. I'm here to win. I want to I wanna remain undefeated. I want to stay world champion. No, we know so mentioned he's still got goals to achieve in the sport. So have I. I've still got more world titles I want to win, and I believe I'll win another one this weekend. Canelo, welcome, Sal. Thank you, thank you. This is another big challenge for you. It's something that you live by in boxing. Así es. Ya estamos acostumbrados a los grandes retos. Gracias a Dios tenemos este esta pelea en el 2020 que ha sido difícil para para todos. Vamos a cerrar con broche de oros con un con un gran campeón y pues estoy contento, no motivado como siempre. Yes, we are here and we're always ready for great challenges. Thank God we've been able to make this fight in 2020 and we're ready to close out the year with a big bang and close it out, you know, as a champ. These uh, surroundings are different. No MGM, grand arrival, no 80,000 people. We've seen with Anthony Joshua last week, he actually quite enjoyed being in this bubble, things being a little bit quieter, being able to focus the mind. Are you enjoying the experience? It's very different. Sí, la verdad que sí. Lo, lo sigo disfrutando al 100%. Obviamente... No se ve la gente en el en el hotel, los gritos, las banderas, pero pues es normalmente lo que hago la semana de la pelea, estar en mi cuarto lo más que se pueda, atender a los medios y prácticamente es lo mismo, nomás sin ver gente en el en el hotel. Yes, it's uh, very similar. You know, it's just different where you don't see the people, you don't see the flags, you don't see everything that uh, surrounds fight week. But for the most part, it's very, very similar to what I do. I stay in my room, focused, you know, take care of uh, media, press, all of that. But it's uh, it's very similar, you know, stay focused and just get, getting ready for what's coming. When I was talking to, to Eddie Reynoso, one thing that struck me about you and Eddie is you want the challenges. You want to fight the best, you know, and if you look at your resume, in 2020, uh, sorry, in, in, uh, last year, you boxed Daniel Jacobs for the World Middleweight Championship. You moved up two divisions to fight Sergey Kovalev for the Light Heavyweight Championship. Now in your next fight, you fight the number one at 168 pounds. Is this what boxing is all about for you, to, to the big challenges and fight the best? Sí, para mí todo lo que me genere, eh, obviamente, un riesgo es lo que me gusta. Este es un gran riesgo para mí, para mi carrera, pero también es un es seguir haciendo historia, ¿no? Calum Smith es el número uno en las 168 libras, queremos hacer campaña en este peso y pues qué más peleando con el, con el número uno en esa división, ¿no? Entonces me gustan los retos y estoy listo para, para seguir haciéndolo y, y, y tomar las grandes peleas. Yes, I like risk. I like taking risk. Taking this fight is a risk. We, we are, I'm fighting the number one at the 168 pounds. So these are challenges for me and I continue to bring challenges forward and I like the risk of it. I like challenges to continue making history. Whenever we see the head-to-head, -head, you know, we saw it against Rocky Fielding, we saw it against Sergey Kovalev, see it against Cam Smith. He's a big guy, right? You know, and, and does that excite you, the fact you're facing these, these bigger men? We know you're coming up through the divisions. Sí, sin duda, no, ya sabíamos que es un peleador muy alto, pero aparte pues tiene muchas cualidades boxísticas también, que eso lo hace aún más completo, pero pues eh, con mi experiencia en, en mi nivel, <coughs> En mi nivel tengo que adaptarme a cualquier situación y tengo la experiencia y las habilidades para poder sobrellevar esto y sé lo que tengo enfrente, pero estamos listos para esto. Yes, we do know that he's tall. We also know that he has great boxing qualities, so that makes him dangerous. But with my experience and the level of my boxing, you know, we're ready for this and to continue making history and taking risks like this. This is what I'm here for. Finally, both of you, Callum, Joe said that obviously the plan 
to end this fight inside the distance. No, it's hard to come away onto foreign ground and, and get that win. Is the plan to try and be explosive in this fight and try and do damage within the distance? Um, yeah, I don't know. Obviously, I, I've got to disagree. I believe it's never going to win. I dominate. I win rounds well. I, I believe I get a fair, fair share at the, at the judges, but every fight I always go in and you know, stick to the tactics and I always find if I do land, I've got the power to hurt anyone in the world and I, know I believe I'm a good finisher. Over the years, I've always got rid of people when, when I hurt them, so the tactics always the same for me. I never go in, you no know, guns blazing, swinging, looking for a knockout, but you know, it's always there in the back of my mind. I'm always ready. I'm you know, quite spiteful when I get someone hurt and this is exactly the same. I've got to treat Canelo Alvarez like any other fighter. Go in there. I'm a world champion. I believe in my own ability and I believe I can beat anyone. So, a big puncher. You're a big puncher as well. Fans watching around the world on the zone this Saturday. We're going to see an explosive fight. Así es, no, siempre salgo a dar lo mejor de mí y pues uh, hablar ahorita aquí pues no tiene caso, no, siempre cuando empieza cuando suena la campana es cuando se ve la realidad y la verdad es que yo siempre salgo a hacer lo mejor y a ganar por cualquier vía, si se me presenta el knockout lo voy a aprovechar y si no tengo la experiencia necesaria para poder ganar con los dos asaltos, no, pero obviamente Siempre ganar por knockout es espectacular y, y pues obviamente siempre, siempre está ahí a la puerta. Yes, that's what we're here for. This is going to be an explosive fight, a good fight, a very good fight. And if the knockout opportunity arises, then yes, I will take that because people, the fans, always like to see a fight end in a knockout. So if, it, if the opportunity arises, I will take it. Thank you, Sal and Callum and all the teams as well. This fight, the fight of the year, this Saturday, live on zone. do not miss it. It's been a tough year. I want to thank these guys for coming through and delivering, as I said, the best fight of 2020. The number 168 pounder in the world against the pound for pound king, Canelo Alvarez. Gentlemen, if we could have a head to head here and I'll call up both trainers as well. Sergio, let's talk a bit about the size difference that we're seeing. I understand that size isn't everything, but there is a significant size difference. No, size is something. It's not everything, but it's something that you have to actually, you have to get on the inside of that big, long reach. You have to, and not only that, you know, Callum Smith is a technician. He's a hard puncher. He's an excellent body puncher. So not only does he have to break that range, but he has to watch out for the punches coming to the head and to the body. This is an extremely tough and big challenge for Canelo, but that's why he's the number one fighter in the world because he doesn't want to go backwards. He wants to face the absolute best to prove why he's the absolute best. One of the key words they kept using uh, during the press conference is risk, risk, risk. Both of them taking such big risks back to back, especially with Canelo, who obviously just last fought uh, Sergey Kovalev, always trying to achieve greatness, the both of them. Um, any final thoughts? No, the risk, the word that Canelo always says is a uh, reto, which is a challenge. And, and the challenge or a risk, that's exactly what motivates them. I mean, fighters like Canelo usually, you know, uh, fighters, period, they fight down to their competition. It seems Canelo needs to do the opposite in order to fight, fight the best. He needs to fight up instead of down to lower himself. Eddie, just before we wrap up, um, any final words on just amazing fight, really? You know, I think at the moment coming through this to get two guys at the absolute top of their game, willing to go in and compete against each other is fantastic. You know, on one side, you've got Callum Smith, who started his professional career with me, watched him come through the system, you know, win British, European, world title eliminators, beat the number one in the division against George Groves to get this opportunity. And, you know, you look at him and the size advantage is important, but he also has great fundamentals. You know, he has a great jab, he knows how to box on the inside and the outside. Can he stand up, can he stand up to the, the hammer? of the Canelo Alvarez bodywork and the ability to fight tall fighters because you saw it against Sergey Kovalev, you know, you saw it against Rocky Fielding. For me, those guys are a level below Callum Smith at the moment. He's in the absolute prime of his career. If he gets it right, I believe you're going to see Callum Smith get a really, really strong lead in this fight. You know, Sergey Kovalev was winning the fight, wasn't he, till he got knocked out. But he was a guy that didn't have the tank, didn't have the freshness to carry that forward. I just feel like when you fight someone like uh, Canelo Alvarez, it's a bit like Golovkin. You have to have some pop. Callum hits hard to the head and the body, and he's really smart. I think it's just going to come down to a face of case of can he can he handle that? Can he handle the pressure? Can he handle the power of Canelo Alvarez, who really has molded into a true 168 pounder now? Can Callum Smith close out the show and Michelle? 
We need to close out the show. Yeah. Oh, was that it? Yes. Is that <laughs> it? <laughs> that was the tap I've on the elbow. I've only done three hours out there. The yeah, tap right. on the elbow. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much for your time. As always, guys, we're going to wrap this up. Thank you for tuning in. And make sure you tune in tomorrow. We have the weigh-in. You don't want to miss the final face-off before all of the action goes down on Saturday night here from the Alamo Dome. Welcome to the zone. See the biggest fights live and on demand. Get the most in-depth fight week experience. <laughs> Join the zone inside the training camps, press conferences, he talks so much. workouts, and weigh-ins. The zone brings you a host of exclusive weekly boxing shows. The sport's hottest topics are subject for debate in jabs. More power to you. Get the inside scoop from your favorite boxers and celebrity fight fans with Ak and Barak. Well, how do you feel about fighting on the biggest stage in the world? And Chris Mannix brings you insights from boxing's best. I'm working toward beating Tyson Fury. That's what I'm saying to the DAZN guys right now. Playback breaks down the biggest fights with the boxers, trainers and promoters that made them. Beautiful. Experience some of the greatest stories in boxing through award-winning original documentary film. Nobody wanted to fight him. He was killing everybody. Unlock over 30 years of boxing brilliance in the DAZN archive and watch the fights that made the legends. Pound for pound, the best in the world. Welcome to DAZN.